This is a wonderful evening. This is the first time I have come here after the construction work that was done on this church. Bishop and your wife, I want to thank you for the great work you have done and I want to thank everyone members of this church people who have contributed to this that we see here may God bless you isn't this beautiful this is amazing keep building Amen. Amen. And this shows the hard work you have put in. You've given your resources, your money. May God increase for you. You have honored him by building such a temple for him. I tried so many times, planned with the bishop to visit, but I kept failing to come. I even got shy. I couldn't tell the bishop that I couldn't come. Not shy, ashamed. I was ashamed. I was ashamed and I was ashamed. I was ashamed. I thought, will the bishop think I do not love him enough to visit, yet I love him enough. But sometimes we go through so many things and we have so many duties. And some you cannot say no to. But we thank God for making it today and thank you for being patient with us. I know you have been here the whole day. You are tired, you are hungry, you have to go back home. We've spent the day in the fellowship of three days. Agatat. Yeah. <laughs> fellowship of three. Yeah. Wednesday. Wednesday. Yeah. Monday, Tuesday. So this is a Wednesday service, special service. <laughs> I thought you knew this. This is a day of great blessing for us to be here. But we are fellowshipping with thousands and thousands following us from different continents. We have people on the radio and on TV. We have people who are on Facebook Live, on YouTube Live. All the different continents of this world. Thank you for attending this special service. We thank you. Let's go to the word of this night. And the theme is the open door. City Light. And the open door is also the theme of the Church of City Light. This is a church that has opened a door for us. And this is a church we need to acknowledge and appreciate. Thank you for opening a door for us that we may come and speak the good news. 
We have different evangelists, preachers. They should be here now. But it is a privilege that you have invited me to come and minister. Thank you, Bishop. We are going to the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 7 and 8. Wandikire maraika witoro ryi Philadelphia uti uwera kandi ukuru ufite urufunguzo rwa David ukingura ntiyagira ukinga kandi ukinga ntiyagira ukingura ravuga ya magambo And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia write these things says he who is holy he who is true he who has the key of David he who opens and no one shuts and shuts and no one opens Nzimirimo yawe Dore nshyize imbere ya urugira ukinguye kandi nawo basha kurukinga kuko ufite imbaraga nke nyamara ukitondera ijambo ryanje twihakana izina ryanje amen I know your works see I have set before you an open door and no one can shut it for you have a little strength I have have kept my word and have not denied my name Iri jambo urugi This statement a door rifite Icyo rivuga cyane cyane mu muco w'abayahudi. It has a meaning according to the Judaic culture. Mu muco w'abayahudi hari ibintu by'ingenzi. They had things that were very important in their Jewish culture. Ikintu cy'ambere yaramazi. The first thing was water. Amazi ni ikintu gikomeye cyane muri ya mico y'abantu y'uburasirazuba. For people who live in the Middle East, water is very important. To this day, water is one of the main reasons why they still have war in Israel. People who have water or have access to the sources of water are the ones who lead Israel imaze gufata igihugu muri 1948 When Israel had taken their land in 48 Byabasabye indi myaka myinshi kugira ngo babashe gufata isoko ya Yorodana hwiba It took them so many years for them to have access to the Jordan Mu ntambara ya 1967 In the 1967 war bafashe Israel igice gito ya muri 1948 Because they took only a small part of Israel in 1948 Hanyuma muri 1967 Then in 1967 Nico ge bazamutse mu majyaruguru mu misozi y'Igolan That's when they headed to the north in the Golan Heights Icyo bashakaga niki What were they looking for Bashaka gufata isoko ya Jordan na hwiri munsi y'umusozi wa Hermon They wanted to have access to the soil of Jordan just beneath Mount Hermon because that part was in the part of Syria Jordan comes from the north and all the way down to the desert of Judea so the main issue was this if the enemy has access to the source of Jordan how will we survive Bagombye kurwana intambara kugira ngo bafate iyo misozi yose y'Igolani iyo muri bibiri uyu munsi bita imisozi y'Ibashani They had to fight so that they could have the Golan Heights within the territory of Israel the Bible calls the Golan Heights of today the mountains of Bashan Mu bice bya Kaisaria ya Filipo mu majyarugu It is in the north near the places as many know Caesarea Philippi Muri buka Yesu ajayo acha kuri wa munyakanani kazi yari yanze Yari yabwiye ko ataha ibiryo by'abana imbwa. Donc wa mugore yaratuye muri Zaliban. Yesu rero yazinze guce muri Liban kugira ngo adaje mu misozi ya Kaisari ya Filipo aho kwisoko ya Yorodan. Jesus met the Canaanite woman if you remember the woman that he told that he can't give food meant for the house and she said even dogs can have breadcrumbs. He had to go all the way by Liban near Caesarea Philippi where the woman used to live. Uyu munsi rero today niba mumva eh Israel ishobora gupfa ipfiri kibazo cy'amazi baza gufata rero ni nyanja yigaliraya If you hear today Israel fighting it is because Israel is ready to die for the sake of having access to water If you hear the sea of Galilee for example Uyu munsi iyo giye muri muri Jordan Today when you go to the Jordan aho tubatiriza 
where we baptize people, it's very small. But, it, but there, is, there is a division line. When you swim, or when we baptize, if you go beyond, Jordan, Israel today in the place where we baptize at the Jordan there is a division line between the part of the Jordan that belongs to Israel and the part that belongs to Jordan the country for people to follow Jesus and for Jesus to preach to many people, he told them something very powerful. He said, I am the water. So for the Jews, it was very significant. It is like preaching to people who rear who ra cows and you tell them, I am milk. Or people who love meat and you tell them I am meat. So for Jesus to tell the Jews that I am water, it was powerfully significant. That's why when he told that to the woman, it captured her attention because water was very crucial to them. Another second important thing in the life of the Jews, even from the ancient history, even today, it is the way. For the Jews, a way a way would connect household to household, town to town. So they respected a way. When God delivered them from Egypt, he told them, you will not use the shortcut. I will go before you and show you the way. When you listen to the song of Miriam and Moses, the song says, he made a way in the water. The reason why God would show the Israelites that he is their God, he is Adonai, it is because he created a way in the water. One thing that blew their minds is to hear that God made a way in the water. Because in their culture, when they talked about Abraham, they would locate him from all of the Chaldeans and he would go up going by the banks of Euphrates River and go to Haran. Then he came all the way to Shechem in the land of Bethel. Then he went to Beersheba the whole way. The way by the Mediterranean Sea. They call it the Via Maris. They call it the way of the king. King's way. The king's way. When the Israelites asked for a way from the Moabites and they refused, God told them, do not fight them because they are your brothers and I will show you the way to come. Every time you read in the Bible where it is written, the way, the way, it is significant. And that's why Jesus said, I am the way. When they would come from the mountains, going to Jerusalem, they would go on the way singing. They would pass through valleys and it would be a difficult way. That's why they would say, when 
that those who have the ways to Zion in their heart are blessed. Even when they go through the valley of the shadow of death, oh hallelujah. hallelujah. They turn it into a place of blessings. That is the way. So a way is poignant for the Jews. Number three. Bread. They would have the feasts of the harvest. Which is what we call the Pentecost. The Pentecost feast. It was not the day to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Like we say, Pentecost. It was the feast of the harvest. They would come carrying sheets, singing the 126th that those who saw in tears will return and rejoice with their sheets. They would have time to praise God for flower. Naomi heard of the news of her homeland that it had rained and they had had a harvest. The Bible says when Naomi reached in Bethlehem, she found that it was the season of the harvest of flour. The Bible says on the day that David went to Adulam cave, it was the season of the harvest. In Sire, which is a flower, they would make bread. And this bread, it was the bread which they called Bethlehem. Because there was a lot of food in Bethlehem. And they would say, let us go to the house of food. In Hebrew, bayit means the house. And food or bread is lahem. And when they connect the two, they come up with Bethlehem. The house of food. Why was there hunger in the house of food? And why did Elimelech flee from the hunger? Sometimes you can be hungry in a revival. Sometimes you can feel pain when everyone is happy. Sometimes you can cry in your blessings. That was the hunger in the time of judges. A place of food. Made people who lived with promises choose to go Message to Moab. So the message Jesus had. He said I am the bread <laughs> from heaven. He spoke a language the people understood. And it was meaningful for them. And they would follow him because of that. I am food from heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Another important thing. It was the city. The city. A city was very important. The way the Jews would build cities. They would build cities according to the houses in the place. Which means the house of Reuben had their city. The, the family of Reuben would have their, lo, their, their the plan. plan. The clan of so, Reuben would have their city. Hakaba. Then there was the clan of Judah. Everyone had Canaan, but they had their lot. You would leave one town, one city to another, and they would say, that the person from the clan of Benjamin has come to the land of God. They would call it the land of God, yet it was one land. Some 
the people who had the territory which wasn't theirs, it was the clan of Simeon. Because they fought earlier on so that they could take the land they were the house of Judah. So the house of Judah said, who has come to save Simeon us? Simeon said, I will come to your rescue my brother. So when they took the part of Judea, Judah told Simeon, do not leave me. I'll give you a town in our midst. That's where he received a land called Beersheba. Where Abraham lived, where Isaac was born, where Jacob was born, and Esau in Beersheba. That was in the land, the territory of Simeon. Given by Judah. Simeon lived with Judah. But the Simeon, the, the city of Beersheba belonged to Simeon. Different from Hebron, which belonged to Judah, and other towns in Judea, such as Kabsa and other places. So a town was very important. So when there was a city, they would surround it in stones like our temple is beautiful. And people would live within the town, with the city. Within the city, there would be a tower. And watchmen would be in the tower. Watchmen were soldiers who didn't go to fight on the battlefront, but they watched over city in the tower. The watchmen would do shifts and observe people who would make crossovers from city to city, from land to land. Then they would also locate people who seem to be lost on the way. And they would show them the way. Sometimes they would see horses coming to attack, other soldiers coming to attack. And then the watchmen would blow a trumpet. When they would blow a trumpet, a trumpet would have different sounds. There was a trumpet that had the sound of battle. It was a slow sound. And this would be done slowly in a way that the enemy wouldn't know that there is a notification going on. And the soldiers within the city would get ready to fight. But again in the city, there was a house that they would call a wall. A fortress. A fortress. A fortress. A fortress would be built as a labyrinth. You would enter a fortress and you wouldn't know how to get out unless if they showed you the way out. So when people would seek refuge in the fortress, the enemy wouldn't attack but would wait for them to starve in the fortress. But in the fortress, they would have storehouses of food for a given period of time. The people who always come with me to Israel, there is a mountain we always see, it is in Megiddo. In that place, Megiddo, I always show them this fortress. And the water, there, was, there were cisterns underground. So 
They would dig so deep and build cisterns where they could fetch water and this would help them live in the fortress for so long. So this fortress, do you remember when the Jebusites told David, they told him we will not fight you. We will send our blind and disabled to fight you. Do you know the confidence they had? It was based on the fortress of the Jebusites. It was very strong. Even in the time of Saul, he couldn't take it. Because Jerusalem Jerusalem doesn't belong to Judah. It's a part that belongs to Benjamin. So Jebusites lived in Jerusalem. David he attacked and took captive the fortress of the Jebusites and called it David's fortress. And he then made Jerusalem the capital of Israel. Why? It was a difficult place to conquer. So he built his capital there. That was in the city. You cannot enter a city without going through a door. You cannot enter through a city without going through a door. Yes, Praise Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A door like Jerusalem itself. It had 12 doors. Jerusalem had 12 doors. You couldn't enter Jerusalem without going through one of the doors. One day, Jesus saw people who had camels carrying food and they had tried to destroy one of the walls of Jerusalem and they took out some bricks then they <laughs> unloaded the loads of food and others would collect it was black market business why? You couldn't go through Jerusalem without going through the door, the proper channels. Then Jesus told the disciples, It is hard for, for the rich people to go through into the kingdom of God. He was basing it on what he had seen. It is easier for a camel to go through the nose of a needle. He was seeing a camel right there. He said, the camel, the, the, the small needle hole, it's like a nose of a needle. And Jesus said this, a thief will not go through the door. He was connecting it to what he was saying, the visuals. So in, in Israel, a door, for us, a, for it's powerful and bigger than the door we open in our houses, going to our rooms. Because for them, a door, they would do business by the gate. The elders of the community, when they were going to solve a matter, they would have a council meeting by the gate. When they summoned you to come to the gate, it is like being invited as a member of a church to go into a pastor's meeting. But these days we don't have church pastors' council. These days we do our council meetings on WhatsApp. But back in the day when pastors would invite you to the pastor's <laughs> council and you're just a member of a church, you would repent all your sins before showing up. 
Why? 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 It was a system of the elders and the judges who lived and had their meetings by the gate. Again, if you would ask for the hand in marriage, for a, 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 a bride, you had to ask for the hand in marriage at the gate. Boaz asked for Ruth at the gate. When men had gathered, the king's man had to take off the shoe and give it to Boaz. And all the men at the gate said, we are witnesses of this. You can have her at the gate. That's where they would accept brides. A bride would be accepted by the gate. At the gate. There were transactions All transactions would take place at the gate. Again, maidens Maidens would leave the gate going to fetch water. And they would come through the gate again carrying jars of water going through the gate. Businesses All businesses happened at the gate. So when they say a gate or a it's very powerful. When God says he opens a door for you, it is beyond the simple door in your household. Again, at the gate. That's where they would fight their enemies. Do you remember that scripture? That children are arrows in a quiver. Because they will they will fight. Their enemies at the gate. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. At the gate is where we deal with our issues, our problems. If you are not elevated at the gate, you will not be elevated in the city. When someone does not host you and welcome you, from the gate and they find you in their house and you didn't go through the gate they will call the police in other, in other places when you find yourself in, in some countries, some countries, even if you take a wrong turn and go to the wrong gate, you could get shot because you have violated their space by the gate. Like in Texas where there is racism, you remember the news story of a young man who was running in the evening. This young man made a wrong turn and went to a neighborhood that was heavily populated by Caucasians, white men, and they eventually shot him, and the police didn't even follow up on that. Sometimes you can even drive your car, and then your GPS could get it wrong and you find yourself in a neighborhood when you find yourself in a neighborhood and you can't reverse back you find other ways going to other households because many people in Africa don't know they will go and try to reverse from the compound of someone when you do that, you are trying in that moment that you're trying to reverse in front of their compound, they will come out and shoot you. 
You want to go to the US. You need to know the meaning of a gate. This is a message. You need to know the meaning of a gate. We need to know the meaning of a door, a gate, because we get to know what belongs to us and what doesn't belong to us. Even when you knock, someone will come out with a gun. If you knock on the wrong door, they will check you out. Because people have gun rights. Because of the gun laws in America, people have access to guns. They buy guns like how we buy tomatoes in supermarkets. You just need to have the right age to possess one. Because if you have a gun law in America, you will, you will buy a gun if you have the documents to prove that you are of age. You just buy a gun like you would buy sweets in a shop. Maybe I have a gun. Do not come to the door before I invite you. Anyway, don't umundu wemere gusakuza kuirembo yao. So what does this mean? People who come to your door are people who have a message and, and a document. And you need to know that there is a document that you're waiting for. Even when they get it wrong. They will come and drop the message. And, and no one will steal. They will drop the letter and move away. I used to be shocked. Security, security. I was shocked when I discovered that they would bring in the mail checks with a lot of money, thousands and thousands of dollars, and no one would steal it. I wonder if that was the same here. They would the mailboxes are open, they will come and put in the mail, and everyone knows to not check a mailbox that is not theirs. It's part of their culture. Another person who can come is police is the police. But even the police will knock. One day I was working. It was around 3 a.m. I was in the office. It was 3 a.m. Last year, I think it was in November before coming. At, at 3 a.m. I had a ring on the door. I was dressed like I was dressed casually. I was at home. So I went to the door. I opened the door. When I opened the door, just across there were two policemen. One was a lady, another one was a gentleman. Because we have automatic lights, when the lights went on, because they stood in the lights, I opened, they showed, they showed me their, their documents to show that they were police. And I came out, and one of my sons woke up. He came down. He didn't think I had opened. He came to see. He found me outside. The police told me that in the neighborhood they have suspected that there is someone they do not know. That a neighbor on the sixth house 
hari umuntu wakoze ku modoka ye say that someone touched his car ubwo police yari hageze so the police came right away araba bwa tariko but they say when the police came they found that the car was fine ijo joro that night bagenda batubyusa twese ngo dufungure ngo turiye kwa modoka yacu ari safe they asked us to open our doors and check our cars to see if our, they are safe but no ne turagira ngo turebe imodoka zanyu ni safe they asked are your cars all safe no ne umamaga y'umwana ndakinguye i called my son i opened yaziri safe i said my car is safe ngweske ngo ngo mwe ndi mwa ni mwa mumvishe ngo namwe mu claiming mu mu murege and they asked me did you hear any sound anyone so that you also make a claim batese kamera zanyu ahanze zirabona are your cameras functioning because there are cameras everywhere okay nacho mu claiming amwe you are not claiming for anything i said no bajya kumuturanya nawe they went to the next neighbor huko Harumuntu basispekse muri karye because they suspected there was someone yibeshagera kumaremba kora ku modoka who came to the wrong gate and touched the car twendi twabone yo police kuko twese badufunga batumara kujya kumuturanya ni bintu bisanzwe i think for us we wouldn't get the number of policemen to handle all of us because we would all end up in jail look police na hano security So the police pardon, pardon. takes umuryango umuryango na hantu umutekano wawe A door is a place of your security ukinguriye niwe winjira udakinguriye nti yinjira Those who enter are those you open for and those you don't open they will not enter Maraika wima The angel of the Lord yabwiye itoro rya Philadelphia yamaga Told the church in Philadelphia these words Nguwera kandi ukuri that he who is holy he who is nufunguzo rwa Daudi he who has the key of david urufunguzo rwa Daudi nuruhe what is the key of david nurufunguzo rukingura ibibazo by'abantu it is a key that opens for the problems of people hagena nurufunguzo rw'imana it is not the key of god nurufunguzo ruzi ibibazo by'abantu it is the key that knows the problems of the people imana igiye gusubiza when god is coming to
Praise Jesus. He who is holy, he who is true. Who has the key of David? He who opens and no one shuts. He who opens and no one shuts. Repeat, he who opens and no one shuts. In 1999, I wanted to go to Australia. So I went to Kenya because that's where the embassy was. I had all the documents I needed for a visa. No, no. I think it was in 1999 because in 1998 I was coming from Israel. When I reached there, I gave all the documents they needed from me. Then I waited. You would drop your document and then wait two to three days. I went there on the third day. I was in a very small hotel. Nogorod. Back it Flora Hotel. It was called Flora Hotel. I was with someone we had met there. We were praying. And my whole heart was in Australia. I couldn't stop dreaming about Australia. I could dream that I was missing my flight. You know what happens when you want to travel so bad? I reached the embassy. They didn't even take me in. The security officer phoned me at the gate. I gave my name and he gave me an envelope with all the documents with refusals. The security officer didn't open for me. He was in a, in a, in a small room and he spoke through a window. Why? The door was closed. The security officer closed and Australia closed for me. And when I, when I opened, I saw my passport and they had stamped in a refusal. No, no. I wanted to ask the security officer, why have they not given me a visa? He's, He's, I asked him and he said, what is this? I don't understand any of it. I was given an envelope to give you. And I got angry, frustrated. I said, no. They have refused me a visa. He said, sorry. I'm really sorry. I'm sorry about it. He said, I don't know these things. I'm just a soldier. I'm just a security officer. Don't ask me anything else. I went back to the hotel. It, it, it was a nightmare. And if you can imagine in 1999 to get money to stay in a hotel, you had to fast and pray for the money to stay in a hotel. No, no. So, I to have you ever been angry with God? <laughs> I was very angry with God. And I thought I was making him pay. <laughs> I said, I'll sleep without praying and I'll eat without praying. I'll punish him. Do you know how last bones act out of spite? So I did that. I slept. Even when a song of praise or worship came, I would rebuke it. I was angry. Around midnight, 
When you have spent the whole of your life praying, there comes a time when you pray even when you don't want it, but it, it's a habit. I was heartbroken, but I prayed. I knelt down. I said, God, I shouldn't be praying. I have, I'm choosing to pray because my heart is forcing me to. They, why have they refused me a visa? And why was it a security officer to give me that envelope? I prayed. Then I went back to bed. I, I just complained and went back to bed. After sleeping, I fell asleep. I saw someone come with another passport. And this person told me from today, you will never, you will never be refused a visa to any country in the world. Then I woke up. I woke up. I had I, I woke up and I had a voice tell me this is just a dream but I also felt happy I felt like God had told me this I came back came back to Kigali told my wife that I had I couldn't get a visa but I had a voice telling me you will never I know many of you are struggling with this. There is a reason why I'm giving this testimony. There is a door that will open and it will never shut. I found a fax message from Switzerland. A young lady we had met in Jerusalem. She was inviting me with my wife that we go visit in Switzerland. No, no. Then, I asked, where is the embassy of Switzerland? It was near the, near the diplomat hotel. That's where the embassy was. When I reached there, I found doors closed. security the security officers told me to come back another day. I went to Arusha. We had a ministry in Arusha. After the conference, I came back. As we were on the flight, there was a lady who was seated in the business class. Let me break it down for you. Economy class, business class. Business class people tend to sit in the head of the airplane and people in the economy sit at the back in the tail. I wasn't by the toilet. I was just a little bit ahead of it. There was a white lady in the business she class. Business. She was seated in the business class. Avayo. She came. She came and sat next to me. Mumve. Listen. And she told me, I have loved you. It and in my head I was thinking I wish you could take me in front loving me is not anything she was seated in the business class tell the the hostesses to take me in front I want to feel how it feels to sit in the business class she kept talking to me and I didn't know that she I didn't know that she was the first council of the Swiss embassy giving visas. She came from the front. Came to sit next to me. Asked me my news. I don't know how she loved me, but I didn't have a rich biography to share. All I could share was that we have a church, we pray for the nation, that's it. 
And she told me, have you ever thought of going to Switzerland? And I told her, and she asked me, have you ever thought of going to Switzerland? I said, I have an invitation. I tried to come to the embassy and the security officers told me that it's not open. And she said, what? Come to see me tomorrow, Tuesday, and I'll, I'll give you the visa. I went. She had called back home in Berlin. And she said, it will take time because I have to recommend you. She gave us the visas, me and my wife. No, no, do so, do so. When we were coming out, we went to the American embassy. They gave us a visa. No, 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 no. So, when we left, I forgot, sorry. No, no, do so. When we left, we met a young man. We knew him. You know when you get a visa, you want to tell it to someone. Eh? There are some... you, back then, people were not evil-hearted as these days. So when you got good news, you wanted to share with someone. You believe that when you shared good news, people would be happy for you. But it's not the same story today. Okay. Today, hearts have become heart cold. But this young man hugged me so much. We were together at the embassy. And he said, you've got the visa to Switzerland. Come. Come, 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 come. It was in the evening. Around 5 p.m. They were about to close. Do you know? Do you know that the person who gives visas in the embassy of the Germans is my friend? How can you go to Switzerland and not go to Germany, to Belgium? That person gave me a passport and said, you will never be denied a visa. And it came back to my spirit. So we went. When we entered, the other woman came and hugged this friend. Hugged him. And he said, even though you've hugged me, these two are my friends. Give them a visa to Germany. She said, she, she was putting in the visas while we were sitting there. Back then, we came with two visas. Okay. Next day, we got a visa to the US. It was the first time they were giving the 10-year visas. I went with my wife. We had Elisha. He was two years. When we reached the embassy, there was an African-American woman. And she said, you've gone to many places. You didn't go with your wife to Israel. As she was saying that, she was giving us visas. She said, these are your visas. Come to collect your passports in the evening. Have you heard what I've said? <laughs> to this day, I, I don't know what it looks like to apply for a visa. He who has the key of David, he who opens, no one shuts. Hallelujah! Let the doors be open for you this evening. Let the doors shall be open. Let the doors shall be open. Hallelujah. 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 Hey. Hallelujah. 
ukwibuke yibuke nabana bawe nabuzukuru bawe nabuzukuru zabawe nabazakuvama bose May God remember you remember your children and all your descendants Ngo chiza imbere ya urugiru kinguye kandi uba nta ubasha kurukinga Behold I place an open door before you and no one can shut it. Hari giye mu buzima bwa kirugira ukingwa. Sometimes a door will be closed in our lives. Iyo rugirwa kinzwe. When a door is shut. Hari giye biterwa na satani cyangwa biterwa n'Imana. Sometimes it can be depending on Satan or God. Mu byahishwe mu When you go to the book of Acts 16. Mu rongo wa gatandatu. Verse 6. Kugeza ku rongo wa 10. To verse 10. Bibiliya iravuga ngo. The Bible says. Ngo bukeye banyura mu gihugu cy'Ifurukiya ni Galatia. Babuzwa n'umwuka wera kuvuga ijambo ry'Imana muri Aziya. Now when they had gone through Phrygia and the region of Galatia, they were forbidden by the Holy Spirit to preach the word in Asia. Ngo bageze ahabangikanye na hehe ni Musia bagerageza kujya ibutinia ariko umwuka wa Yesu nti yabakunde inzuga yarigeze ifungwa kubera impamvu z'Imana After they had come to Mysia they tried to go into Bithynia but the spirit did not permit them sometimes God will close doors Nuko banyura imusia bagera itirowa So passing by Mesia they came down to Troas. Nijoro Paul agira gute? Ararota. Abona umugabo w'umunya Makedonia ahagaza mu inkinga ati ambukwe uze i Makedonia udutabare ngo amaze kurota izo nzozi. Uwo mwanya dushaka kujya i Makedonia kuko tumenye yuko Imana iduhamagariye kubabwira ubutumwa bwiza. Hallelujah. And a vision appeared to Paul in the night. A man of Macedonia stood and pleaded with him saying, "Come over to Macedonia and help us." Now, after he had seen the vision, immediately we sought to go to Macedonia, concluding that the Lord had called us to preach the gospel to them. Eh? Hari miryango itatu yigeze gufungwa mu buzima bwanje irambabaza. There are three doors that shut in my life and it broke my heart. Umwe nari kuri university muri 1990. One was shut when i was at the university in 1990 someone liked me yari mwene wabo na president mobutu person was related to president mobutu niwe bari baratumye guhagarira radio yikisangani yari yari giberle mu budage this person had gone to school in berlin in germany and he was the representative of the radio in kisangani radio yikisangani niwe ari uhagarari He was the, the leader, the managing director. The But he came from the family of President Mobutu. So in our church, when we had problems with instruments, this person told me at the radio there are technicians. And the technician, when we went there, to ask, the managing director of the radio came. When he came, I don't know what happened. I went to buy him a soft drink. He's going to help us. I was not a pastor. And the money I had was the remaining amount of money I had left. But listening to his experience with instruments, he felt like he knew, uh, he knew what he was talking about. So they came, sat, I was with my friends, started checking our mixer. I went across the street. I brought him a soft drink. He looked at me and drank the soft drink and said I'll come back but he tried to repair some of the things then the next day he came called me and said come he told me he asked me who are you I told him my name is Gitkwaza where do you come from I told him I come from South Kivu he told me come to see me at the radio I went to see him at the radio I found that he was a very important man. We sat. We talked. Then I went. After a month, he came back and told me, I need to talk to you. He gave me an address of someone. And he said, this man 
is a very rich man in Germany. Ariko nta mwanagira. But he has no child. Agiye gusaza. He is aging. Yarantumye ngo. He asked me Nisubira muri Zaire iwacu. That when I go back to Zaire. Ngonza mushakira umwana. That I should find him a young man. Mwiza who is good looking, who is going to study at the university, or who is in the university, will come, I'll educate him, and I'll give him my wealth. Now, this is his address. We will write, we will take it to the post office, and we will mail it to Germany, with your pictures. So we wrote, told me how we would write. We sent the mail, and the letter went. I started fasting for 40 days. That was my business, fasting and prayer. I said, let me send out the letter, and I will kneel down and pray. You know when you act holier than thou so that Satan has no way to attack you. After 40 days we used to go to this post office to check for letters. I found a very big letter with all my letters, my documents. They had written at the top. He was called Bendestone. And he said, that your letter arrived 10 days after the death of Bendestone. Tell me, <laughs> tell me how you would react to that. I was young. I was 19. I saw that the whole world had come to a halt. <sighs> okay. So. All right. Then there came a young man who we used to minister together. And this young man told me, said, I have an uncle. He's a professor in the university in Moncton in Canada. Moncton. Moncton. And they have asked me, and he said, my uncle has two scholarships, one for me and another one for someone in this whole church who is my best friend. And I love you more than everyone else, so I'll give you the scholarship. The moment he said that, I said, I'm going to fast. His name was His name was Former. He was a Luba. Yes. I told him, are you sure? He said, it's my uncle. He went to Canada a long time ago. So we, we, he had two forms. We filled in the forms. I say, someone advised me. These forms, these forms, these forms, Someone told, someone told me, send this to your brother in Kinshasa, Ruben, and he will send this out to Canada. It will be faster. We, I gave these documents to a lady. We used to call her Mama Monique. She went all the way to Kinshasa. She spent the night where she was supposed to spend the night and was meant to meet Ruben the next day. That same night, the soldiers attacked that house and stole everything in that house, including the envelope with my scholarship forms. They took the envelope and a few other items in the house. I didn't know what happened. I 
I said in prayer, I didn't know if Ruben got the forms. I didn't know anything. I just kept in prayer. After two months, Fomba told me, your file never made it to Canada. I'm going to Kinshasa to sort out my passport mm. details and go. But my uncle has, has, has sent another form. Fill it, please. But me, I'm going for Kinshasa on Monday. I'll go to the embassy, they'll give me a visa, and then I'll go to study. Okay. I filled in the form again. Someone came and told me I'm going to Kinshasa. And your brother, I know where he lives. Please, I told him, please give this to my brother and ask him to send it with the DHL. This person came. When he got to the airport in Kisangani, he got there. At the airport, he met my brother who was going to Bukavu, gave him the envelope. My brother took the envelope to Bukavu. It never made it to Canada. Brethren, I have <laughs> suffered. <laughs> this story. I haven't talked about closed doors. Bear with me to finish with closed doors. I have I, I talked to my brother and asked him, why couldn't you mail it? He said, I just carried it with all the other books I had. I never mailed it. I was heartbroken. When I came back to Kisangani, Ruben wrote to someone and told him, my brother is at the university in Kisangani. Take him from the campus and bring him to live with you. He was, he was leaving Kinshasa going to represent all the customs officers in the, that part of Zaire. So I saw a customs. They used to call that company Ofida and they came with their car. They said we are looking for Gitkwaza. And they had a letter. I read the letter. He said bring all your things. I went to live in the city. He had his child. His son had graduated. He had gone to register us at the Sorbonne's University in France. We were registered. He said, I want you to stop studying here, move to France, live with my son, and keep raising him, mentoring him. They had done everything in, in secret with Reuben. I didn't know anything. So he told me, him and his wife, say, we're going to Kinshasa. When we come back, please. It's a surprise. They had taken my photos, everything to take care of it in Kinshasa and the visa applications. I had come one evening, I was coming from prayer on the left river, as they used to call it. When I came home, 
We didn't have mobile phones, we just had landlines. They said there is a line that has been calling for you the whole day. That they were announcing the death of that man in Kinshasa. He reached there. He was a powerful man. And they poisoned him. And with the poison, they found that all his internal organs were in failure. And that's how he died. I told my colleagues, let's go and preach in Kivu. There is nothing else left for us to do here. My God, my God. Closed doors. Nairobi. Then I went to Nairobi. After Australia, God sends me to Rwanda. So, because of the heartbreak I had in my heart, coming to Rwanda took me eight months of battling with God. All the doors closed were for Europe to be saved when Paul would visit Macedonia. I, if I had gone to Canada in Moncton, or if I had gone to France in Sorbonne, I would not be here. Let's be honest and truthful. I would be a professor, probably dead or just that, living a regular life. Because in my vision, I, I wanted to be a pilot or an astronaut. The we grew up seeing our fathers pastoring and we knew it was a lot of hard work dealing with people's hearts that was hard work so I didn't want that I just wanted to be a pilot or an astronaut all the doors that shut in your life are not the end of your life. But it is the beginning of another life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Asia was shut, but Europe opened. Today we have received the gospel because Paul went to Macedonia in this season it's a door of a short time I go to Canada all the people like Fuamba they come to see me based on an appointment for them to see me they pray not because I am proud, but because God has made me who I am today. Australia. Australia. I wanted to go and study there. In, two, in 2001, I went and found my host had prepared a red carpet of salt to welcome me as a president. I went to preach to around 1,000 pastors in Australia. Africans. There were not many Africans in Australia. Because the conference I had in 2001, there were only two black pastors from Nigeria and they had just come in to open the redeemed church. They wanted to integrate in the association of pastors. Doors opened 
And even the heavenly door opened. Ari re mburyo kwisi, ari ryo mwijuru, twararihawe. Be the door on earth or the door in heaven we have received it. Humura. Sophia. Umujyango wa wakinzwe igihe gito. Your door has been closed for a short while. But God will open. And your life will never be the same again. So I ask that this evening. You enter the door of hope. Door of faith. Enter the door of faith. Enter the door of faith. Hallelujah. 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 Acts of Apostles 14, 27. Then Peter answered and said, Lord, we have heard that you are a man. Now when they had come and gathered the church together, they reported all that God had done with them and that he had opened the door of faith to the Gentiles. I pray that tonight God will open a door of faith for you and that you will enter in it. There is a door of faith that God has opened in your heart. And faith comes by what we hear and what you have heard. Let it create faith in your life. God has opened a new door in your life. And whatever your life has been doing, and for every new door that opens, it attracts new trials and new devils. Prepare yourself to fight those trials. I understood that every new door attracts its own demons. Every time there is a divine door opened, there is also a satanic door waiting. Every elevation calls demons. Get ready to fight a good fight of faith. Because your destiny is a good one. There are some trials you never face when you are still at the bottom. There are, there are people who do not struggle with the trial of finding food, but they struggle with the trial of what to eat because they are dictated what to eat. We used to eat everything. And when, and we used to eat everything, but today God has given us everything to eat, but they have told us what to eat, what is healthy for us. So every level has a devil. The battles I fight today, I do not have an issue with newspapers and media houses YouTube. or YouTube channels. I don't mm -hmm. struggle with that. No. Because it is not the media that established me. No, no. Kuko nakinyamakuru cyansebza mu rwego rwatuma abantu batumva ibyo mvuga. Iyo level ndikibaho. There is no media house no. that can slander my name to the extent that people will not listen to the word I have to share. Because what we share actually blesses those who do not approve of us. It inspires and elevates those who do not approve of us. They hate you but you still bless them. So because you we were not made by the media, you cannot fight the media. But let me tell you the trials we face. We struggle with the trial of finding resources that meet the visions we have. There are 
the issue of finding millions is not really a big issue for some churches. Some churches actually need billions of money. Before I was married, I was married. Before, before I got married, I used to pray that one day I would be able to buy a radio and play music. And when I got married, I went with my wife to South Africa and I, I actually bought the radio and played music and then started wanting more. Haven't you ever prayed for $100 and God gives you 100 and you want 1000 That's how life is. We keep wanting more. So every level where you are, there are some trials you... you overcome. And then you find challenges that meet that new dimension. Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians 16, 8-9. Paul said, Paul said, for a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. Many, many. Many, many. Opposition, foes, enemies. I have many enemies. I have many enemies. I have many if we were to give you the enemies I fight, some of you would never make it. But every level has its adversaries. I also have levels that I have not reached at, and I cannot handle the adversaries in those levels. Pastor Barbara. Watch this, Pastor. There are people who say, there are people who come and say, so and so have gossiped about me. They are going to see me. I'm going to deal with them. But when I was to, if I was to complain about the people that talk about me, where would I start? So we will cry with those who cry, counsel them because we've been there, but go back to the level where we are praying for resources for the kingdom. Because we have many adversaries in the calling. When a door opens, expect new problems. What you are being requested is to know this. Every level requires a friend at that level. For every door that opens, it requires a friend in that door. I am not encouraging you to break old friendships, but let me tell you this, there are levels where you need friends in those dimensions who will speak your language, who will advise you and counsel you according to that level. But the other old friends are for just laughing, for enjoying, for fun, but it's not in that dimension. 
Every new door needs a true brother. Ukenera mwene data mu irembo ryose. You need a true brother for every new door. Abikurindo bakabiri kabiri 12. Let's go to 2 Corinthians 2:12 to 13. No kwicumi na gatatu. Ngubwo naza gitorowa nzanwe no kubwiriza ubutumwa bwiza bwa Kristo. Ngo nubwo nakinguriwe urugi n'umwami wacu nabuze uko nduhura umutima wanje kuko ntasanze yo tito mwene data. Iri rembo rikeneye tito wawe kugira ngo ubashe gufunctiona ugere kure. When I came to the city of Troas to preach the good news of Christ, the Lord opened the door of opportunity for me. But I had no peace of mind because my dear brother Titus hadn't yet arrived. This, door, this door needs a dear brother, a Titus. You need a Titus for every level that you reach in. Paul says that even though the Lord had opened the door of opportunity for me, I need a Titus. It's not two of them, it's just one Titus. What will Titus do for you? Tito Titus Arasa. will come and tell you today they applauded you but be careful that applaud, applauding was for Jesus when Titus find them slandering you they will tell you let's keep moving that's how they are when Tito checking balance and check Tito ndi yifuza kusinda usinda mashi abantu kuko muri ayo mashi habamwa ibinyoma igiye cyose tita rakubwira ngo no bari ya bose bavuza gakaruru siko bagushigikiye rero wewe ukomeza kuri vision yawe nanone sitito yasanga uri down ati uri down gute nabantu imana yaguhaye ti wabonye bagukomeye amashi bihumbi ah ati koko nababonye tito abereye mu buzima ngo nubwo imana yankinguriye mu muryango ngo ari ku mutima wanje ndibigeze utuza kuko nasanze tito mwene data titus will help balance the emotions of every situation and circumstance when you're discouraged titus will come to encourage you and tell you remember you have people who support you and when titus finds you encouraged he will tell you to always watch out because not everyone who uploads you is for you Bavandim, brethren there are doors before us some will be shut by Satan. That require for us to pray. You sense, when you pray, they open. Amen. 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 You sense when you pray, these doors will open. When you pray and call upon the Lord, God will work. Ooh, hallelujah. 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 Prayer is a must to open the door for evangelism and everything that God has purposed in your life. Colossians 4 chapter 3 Meanwhile, praying also for us that God would open to us the door for the word to speak the mystery of Christ for which I am also in chains. Bishop Bishop, this is what I did. When I saw that God had opened doors for us in all the continents, I was attacked in a way that I'd never been attacked in my life. When I prayed, God told me that I fight a giant of every continent. So I understood that I fight the giant of Africa because we have a ministry here in Europe, in the US, all the places where we have our ministry, five continents. When I understood this, I asked the church, from Australia to America. Because 
to have an altar of 24 hours. They have prayer requests they pray for. But every second, every hour, they have to mention my name and my wife and our children. That's how we managed to rest from the attacks of these giants. I cannot fight each giant and overcome, but the altar in Australia will pray for the giant in Australia and mention my name. Those in Europe will do the same. Those in the U.S. will do the same. And that's how I found rest. And I don't fight these giants alone. So pray for me. Now you sing it. And I'll pray without forgetting your pastor. And every place where you have churches, you should have altars. And ask them to pray and mention the name of the senior pastor. It is important. Every time the devil goes to accuse me, he'll find my name being mentioned. And it has been two years that I'm just resting. I am very well. I can sleep at the pulpit. Because there are sons and daughters mentioning my name right now. Paul said, pray for us. Hallelujah. Amen. Pray for your pastors. We pray for your doors to be open. Please pray for us to be kept safe. Nor can the door will be opened. Don't stop knocking on the door. God will answer. Have faith in the Lord. Ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be open to you. Jesus said in Luke 11. Someone kept knocking at the neighbor's house. And he answered from within and said, Do not trouble me. The door is now shut and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give to you. And the Jesus said, I say to you, though he will not rise and give to him because he is his friend, yet because of his persistence, he will rise and give him as many as he needs. God eventually opens the door when we pray. Milango ya gereza. Ikafunguka milango ya gereza Ikafu Paulo nasira wali over Paulo nasi Jameni wali omba milango ya gereza Ikafunguka milango ya gereza Baba Ukipata matatizo, shetani aki kusonga, majaribu ya shetani, mama ya kikusonga, usisa hau kuomba, mungu atasikia, uombe kwa bidi kama, paulo na sira, paulo na sira, wali omba, paulo na sira. Jameni wali yomba, 
Milango ya Gereza Uhu Milango ya Gereza Yes we Vijana wa leo Mukiomba wa mama wa leo Na nyinyi mukiomba Madirisha ya mbinguni Ya tafunguka Ikiwa mukiomba kama Paulo na sira Paulo na sira Waliomba Paulo na sira Jameni waliomba Milango ya gereza Ikafunguka Milango ya gereza Oh oh Ika funguka Hallelujah 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 Ongeru singi kan Pray again Hari ya kizgi za kinguka Because there are doors that will open Paul and Silas prayed Gumi yangu ya kinguka And the doors opened Woo Hallelujah! Hallelujah! When we pray, when we call upon the Lord, the doors from prison will open. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! God had given me ministry. I worked as a volunteer. I didn't start the ministry. I would go to a church. I was a good member of the church and a worshiper. Then I would go and preach on the streets. In 93, I preached in the streets of Nairobi. In Uhuru Park in 93. 
Washa, 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 washa moto wa inji. Iyo ni nibo twahimbye no witwa David Kinuthia. Turi turi muri uhuru pake, twakwitaga Nairobi yose gatetemeka. Washa, washa. I compose that song washa, with David Kinuthia. Washa, washa moto ya inji. Hallelujah. Then in that time, there was a pastor, an American pastor. He was a friend of mine. He loved me. I was a member of his church. He came from a very rich family. His father was a millionaire. Calvary. He had given him the capacity to open, of God. to open Calvary Muriza Assemblies Singapore, of God Za Kenya. in Singapore, in Kenya. I was in his church and I would go and preach. I was an evangelist who was always preaching on the streets. I, I would sleep wherever the night would find me. So he called me took me to his house. He had a beautiful apartment by Yaya Center near Ngongo Road. He told me I have prayed and my heart has convinced me that I have to send you to the US go to Seattle you will study there for nine months. Then you will come back. And when you come back, we'll make you the overseer of all our ministries in Africa, from South Africa to Cairo. Then he told me, you see this fridge. He opened the fridge. There was a lot of food. He had a TV screen. At the time, he had an email. They had just begun. He had a big computer. And he was telling me, I can send out a thousand mails and they will go everywhere. And I was wondering, how does this work? It's an electronic email and he taught me all these things to do with technology. There was a wonderful car there and he told me this will be yours. This car we will work in the ministry together for three months then I'll send you to Seattle. I looked at him and I told him it's not possible. He said, what? I said, it's not possible. I said, I have a ministry that will reach all over the world. I had spent seven days homeless. On those seven days, I was only drinking coffee, no food, and I was homeless. And the the trial I was facing. Satan opened the door so that I confuse it with God's door and lose God's calling for my life. And he told me, Jonathan told me, have you lost your mind? This is a once in a lifetime opportunity. There was a Kenyan man whom they had started the ministry, whom they worked together. He said he asked this from me and I refused. But I feel like it is you I should give this to. I said no. He said I'll give you a week. Let's meet and talk about it. After a week I refused again. Then I came to Rwanda and faced the challenges and trials okay, here. Then one day, one day, we were in the Apostolic Coalition in Dallas. And 
And there are so many apostles from all over the world and most of them are our brothers who are white. In the 12 people who are seated in front, by the grace of God, I was seated there. Are you listening? Our president, the coalition president, introduced me. Because we had new apostles from Brazil and other places. And he introduced me. When he introduced me, the, the friend, the pastor from Kenya, he was seated at the back way back. He said, that's my son, that's my son. When I looked, he wanted to come in front, but the ushers couldn't allow him to come in front. He waited. Briefly, I lead him in the coalition. He left the ministry and started another ministry as well. He left many churches, the Calvary Assembly of God, and he started his own ministry. I was one of the people who had to approve his membership in the coalition as a prophet. So let me ask you, if I had accepted his offer that day and then they sent him the next day what would have happened to me? I would be in Nairobi confused. He came and told me, my son, I beg you, go to Seattle. I have a very big land. I have a TV station. I have a radio station. Come and minister all the times you want. I told him, my father, I don't have the time for that. And truly, I didn't no, find time. To this day, he sent me a email. Said, I'm waiting for you, you to come back. Me. Me. This is an offer that has stood for four years. Do not be discouraged and lose what God has given you. Hold fast on the vision. Don't take the beans and replace them with the birthright. Today it seems the door is shut. Jonathan gave me the offer when I was homeless. The Kenyans had stolen. The Kenyans had stolen all the money I had paid and I had in the hotel and they had to put me on the street for seven days homeless. One day I was so hungry. One day I was so hungry. I went to ask for the young man who was working at the reception for coffee and drinking coffee after going hungry for so many days, it almost killed me. Satan and Satan would whisper to me, you saw the fridge in Jonathan's house? You see the car? You see the house? Go America. Going to the US? For nine months? To go and study? And represent the whole of Africa? No. I said, devil, no. God told me, there is something God told me that I will prepare the bride of Christ. So I pray a blessing for each one of you that you may not have problems because Jesus is with you. Your door, your first door is your heart. Open your heart. 
Open your heart to Jesus. And he will use you to do great things. He will use you to do great things. And he says, Behold, I stand at the door. Revelation 3.20 And I knock if anyone hears my voice and opens the door I'll come into him and dine with him Jesus wants to dine with you this evening shake off the door open the door because this is what will happen when he comes in you he will allow you to also enter in his house in John 10.7 he says, he says, Verily, verily, I tell you that I am the door. I am the door. If anyone goes through me, they will be saved. They will enter and go out and find a pasture. In this moment, I want you to open your heart because the greatest door is yours. The second is to enter the door of Jesus. Jesus will lead you into the door of your opportunities. Are we together and you want to receive Jesus? You want to enter in that door? Let's pray. We are going to pray with you. If you want to get saved, if you haven't received Jesus, I'll not ask for so much. Raise your hand where you are. If you want to get saved, if you want to receive salvation, raise your hand. If we are with you, raise your hand. Raise your hand. I want to pray for you. Raise your hand. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Protocol in Fasha, Umana, and Jazahan. We know no papa. We know how to shake it. Come down, please. Let me ask the ashes to bring you. We know, I shall help them. Take a step and come forward. Come and receive Jesus. Come and receive Jesus. Come and receive Jesus. Open your heart. Open the door to your heart. Open the door to your heart. Open the door to your heart. We know. Come, come. We know. We know. Stand here. We know. Come and receive Jesus. We know. Come. 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 Let's clap for Jesus. 
Yehova mwene data are you doubting and you still seated in your chair open your heart Jesus will enter your heart we are waiting for you please keep coming keep coming please, please leave your chair and come come quickly come quickly Behold, I stand on the door and I know when you open, I will enter and I will dine with you. Today, Jesus is coming to your hearts to dine with you. Close your eyes and let us pray with you. Repeat, Lord Jesus, I am a sinner. Forgive my sins this evening. I open my heart. Come in my heart. That I may dine with you. Be my king. And I'll be your slave. Be my savior. Wash me with your blood. Thank you. That you have entered in my heart. From today. I am free. Satan. Satan. I refuse you. And all that you've brought in my life. Go away. Come out of my life. Yes. Jesus. Thank you. For setting me free. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. The work you've done is powerful. All your sins are forgiven. Number two. Your names are written in the book of life. The third thing that has happened. Right now in heaven there is a celebration because of you. They are celebrating because of you. Because of you. Another thing that has happened. The peace you've never known in your life will fill your heart. Amen. Amen. You see the usher there. Can you turn on your left? Go and sit with your usher, the usher and they'll talk to you. So that we'll keep helping you. Church of God. There is something Jesus has done. They are young people. Feed them and let them serve God. I'm going to pray for you so that your doors will open. Then I'll close. Let me ask that we stand. Paulo Nasida Walio Paulo Nasida Walio Milango Yakeleza Ika Futuka Milango Yakeleza Paulo Oh yeah you are very hungry. Eh? 
Are you very hungry? Muko bien. Are you well? Let's sing. Paula nasira, bali bomba. Paula nasira, bali bomba. Milango ya kesa, ikafunguka. Milango ya kesa, ikafunguka. Paula nasira, bali bomba. Kafunguka. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Kera kesa urebi bili yangu ya wakinza muri yumanya tu gie kuishi mbere yima. Look at the doors that have shut in your life, and we will present them to God. Akazi. Work. Kafunzu gie kire kire. That has been shut for so long. We will pray for you. Inda ya funzu gie kire kire tabzara tu ai sengi. If you have been barren for so long, we will pray for you. Visas are funds we get kire kire. Trust this engine. We will pray for visas that have been shut down. Ubugenge buga funds we get kire kire. Trust this engine. Your mind that has been shut, we pray for it. Let's pray. We take a man who come to Jimbele. Mighty God, we come before you. Trust that you perform a miracle this evening. Open the doors. The doors that have been shut. The doors that have been shut. In the name of Jesus. The doors that have been shut. The doors that have been shut. The doors that have been shut. In the name of Jesus. The doors that have been shut. 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 Let them receive sons and daughters. Those who couldn't get married, let them get married. Let them find husbands and wives. Those who have no work, let them find work. Let them be rejoicing this day. Give your spirit that closes doors. Soka. Come out. Soka. Come out. Soka. Come out. Soka. Jesus, perform your miracle. Open this door. Open this door. Let the doors of work be opened. Let the doors of health be opened. Let a good health come. The doors of revival. The increase of belief. The doors of revival. The increase of belief. The increase of belief. The increase of belief. And gift spiritual gifts. Perform miracles. Perform miracles. Perform miracles. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Rekitoro du subiremo. Let the church repeat. Repeat and receive. Your my miracles. Namarembo mwe. Your doors. Yakinswe. That we are shut. Uguruka. Be open. Kinguka. Be open. Ubiza bwi mana butambuke. And let the glory of God come through. Nanye kamumwe. You pillars. Ugu uguruka. Be open. Imbarakazi mana zikara gare. Let the power of God may be manifest. Da kiriye. I receive. Akazi. A new job. Da kiriyaba ana. I receive children. I receive a good life. I receive healing. I receive greatness. I receive honor. I receive the glory of God. I receive spiritual gifts. I receive revival. I receive comfort. I receive miracles. In the name of Jesus. From today. I will never be the same again. And whoever will see me, they will be amazed by my God. Glory to you. Today and for eternity. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. May God bless you. Amen.